And do they just have a dartboard with random words on it or something? Is this some kind of South Park Family Guy manatee situation, but for what entertainment products to make? It seems like more and more, with every new announcement, I find myself saying, who, who is this for? Who asked for this? What we're seeing right now? Nobody knows. And the problem isn't that small audiences are being served, it's that these companies are using massive resources to attract a small group that can't possibly support them. We already know that there is a vacuum of creativity in Hollywood so massive, James Dyson has to peel his underwear off the morning after he dreams about it. But it's not just creativity, it's a lack of critical thinking as well. The entire town is so high on its own flatulent supply that they never stop to think about the customer. They have zero clue who's going to consume these products or how large that group is. Previously, I've spoken about the narcissism that drives many of these productions and how they're basically personal diaries brought to your screen. But today, let's look at the business side of things because somewhere in, I don't know, probably accounting, some sane individual has to be looking at these audience numbers and wondering, uh, hey, who, who exactly is going to be buying this? Somebody has to, right? Uh, is anybody else seeing this right now? <laughs> you know? Do I have to stop? Am I the one? Take the Marvels from last year. Was it hilariously bad, just like as a movie? 100%, yeah. It was so disjointed, it could escape from a locked crate if you threw it in the East River. Clearly a Franken film, so much was obviously macheted out of this thing, you could almost see the stitches between scenes. But beyond the atrocious dialogue, the lackluster fights, the lack of chemistry between the leads, and, and a villain that was so dumb and pointless she makes Ivan Venko look amazing, there remains the core question, who was this supposed to be for? The supposed lead is one of the most unlikable characters and actresses in the franchise. Marvel obviously knew that. They lessened her role while changing the name from Captain Marvel 2 to The Marvels. But if not Carol, who's going to lead this mess? Well, two lesser known Disney Plus characters, of course. Monica Rambeau from WandaVision, fan favorite right there. I know everyone totes came away from WandaVision desperately wondering what happened to Monica. The final log of this three-legged stool was Ms. Marvel, a character who starred in the least watched MCU show in existence. Aiming Kamala Khan at teenage girls, that's a fine strategy, honestly, provided that you don't invest too much in what is obviously a small market. Oh, looks like they spent over $150 million on that. Never mind. Okay, well, you've got three characters who aren't extremely popular on their own, and there has been no groundwork laid to get anyone excited for them teaming up, other than, you know, they're all women, so... Girl power! Originally slated to be the flagship for Phase 5, it was pushed off and included nothing in the way of the overall Phase plot. It's a major entry into the cinematic universe, but it's a standalone thing, but also doesn't stand up on its own. We tossed in Ms. Marvel talking to Kate Bishop and as an after credit scene, so it seems like they're trying to go for teenage girls for this large franchise that has up until now been funded by guys aged 16 to 40. Okay, we hired a director whose previous work is very activist to make this action comedy. Okay, they had no plan. They didn't have the slightest clue who would want to watch this movie. But I guess they figured if they built it, someone would come. This multi-billion dollar franchise seemed to suddenly shift gears and appeal to teenage girls, and they spent almost $300 million doing it. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. I hope it works out for me. If I'm bold, just come right out, ask you to push the like button. I don't even have any dignity left. You guys don't know what I sacrificed for you. All right, I'm back. I forgot a couple of things. One, I put my popcorn mug down here in the studio. Totally forgot about it. This thing is awesome. Two, I bought this sampler of Cooper's coffee. Forgot about it down here as well. I'm drinking the Sumatra today. It's really dark. It's really good. Uh, this stuff is in the Amazon link. I have a little affiliate store. If you're going to shop there anyway, all of my coffee and tea purchases and my Studio stuff is in there, and I think if you buy stuff, I get like 1%. I don't know. I predicted all of these things in videos last year, and in my final one, I thought I was making an outlandishly absurd prediction when I said that the Marvels would end up making $400 million. And I'm like, I know, that's hyperbolic, it's crazy low. Guys, I'm a YouTuber. Sometimes I just say crazy stuff for the controversy. 
and then it actually made 200 million. Ouch town population you bro! Don't know who your audience is? Make a poor product? Doesn't make any money. That's so weird. A similar case can be seen in Madame Web. I'm not sure where you guys can stream this one right now, but if you want some laughs and you already have that particular subscription, it honestly might be worth your time. For some strange reason, Sony has been trying to build the Sony Spider-Man universe because everything needs to be a whole universe now, except there's just one little problem. There's no Spider-Man! I want Spider-Man! They made a movie centered around a Spider-Man comic secondary, no, tertiary character who exists to exposit and drive plots with her future viewing powers. They can't even say Spider-Man or Peter Parker in this movie. Is the spider person in the room with us right now? They can only suggest the presence of Spider-Man. These movies are spider-adjacent, spider-esque, if you will. They may or may not contain themes that are indicative of a web-slinging heroic figure whose name may or may not be Eater Pay, Arker Pay. The villain's mouth and lines match up like an English Kurosawa dub. It's honestly kind of hilarious. But who is going to watch this? Sony really figured superhero mania would move this garbage. They even cast Sidney Sweeney in a genre mostly patronized by younger men and then didn't show off her acting abilities. So we have a character no one cares about in a universe where you can't say the name of the only thing fans do care about and we didn't even try to use basic sex appeal. Who, who was this for? Whoever it was, they're the only ones that showed up. It only made $100 million worldwide, which would be fairly respectable if the break-even point wasn't around $200 million. Missed it by that much. And Sony can't catch a break. Last week, they unveiled another product for an audience that numbers in the hundreds of dozens, and that would be the PS5 Pro. The PS5 is the fifth generation of PlayStation consoles. Microsoft, you hear that? Hey! Hey, one, two, three, four, five. It's not hard. You're not clever. It's very annoying. For the second generation now, Sony is adopting the smartphone model for their consoles. You didn't want to get the iPhone 14? Six months later, how about the 14 Plus? How about the 14S Plus Ultra Mega Super? It's three grams lighter. For consoles, this actually does make some sense, or it used to. Computer hardware advances at an incredible rate, and each new console basically has entirely new software architecture, so they can't put out new consoles all the time. Yet, chipsets are faster and cheaper. So, what do you do if you are a PS5 owner who bought a console back in 2020, which had hardware that was contractually secured in 2019, probably 2018, but you want to take advantage of the latest advancements in graphic card and processor technology? Well, Sony figured you'd like a little upgrade. But more, but just a little bit extra. Unfortunately, the base model of this new console is 700 schmackaroos, and that is in America. For you Islanders, 700 pounds, which is just over 900 freedom bucks? And that's roughly the same amount of declaration ducats that converts to the 800 euros this will run the rest of you in the union. Wow, we're actually paying the least. Proud to be an and that's just the base model. You want a stand? 30 bucks. You want an external drive to play your game discs? 80 bucks. You want a pro controller to go with your pro console? 200 big ones. So at this point in the video, you might be wondering, what did Sony do wrong? I mean, gamers like to buy game consoles, right? How did they mistake their audience? Well, it is that price and the possibility of pushing their customers into PC gaming, which they might not return from. I was recently on stream with 30NSG, who phrased it quite well. He was talking about all the consoles kind of being on their own little islands. They've manufactured their own audiences. And he said Sony was on their own island with their own customers. And now, with this new price range, they're effectively creating their own competition with gaming PCs. Some of you might not think that's true because you think a, gaming PCs are wildly expensive, and B, the only thing to consider is the console cost. Both are untrue. Video game graphics have been the most notable advancement in the console world for some time. Years ago, we had this. Now, we have this. But something PC players have known for some time is that the graphical quality is one thing, but the number of frames a game can render per second is also important and makes everything look much smoother.
A few years ago, some console players learned that as well because the latest generation of game consoles can achieve 60 frames per second or more. And it genuinely is an incredible difference. However, in order to achieve that, the console has to downgrade the graphics a little bit. The PS5 Pro says, Both. 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 Both is good. But there's a wrinkle. Most console players use their home television. You're typically going to find an Xbox or a PlayStation in a living room or a bedroom played on a big flat screen. But those are designed for watching TV, which is usually at 24 or 30 frames per second. So if you're going to buy this new console and use it in the way most consoles are used, then you're going to need a new TV that will display 120 frames per second and has an HDMI 2.1 slot. And you're going to have to buy new HDMI 2.1 cables. Currently, pretty much only OLEDs and QLEDs are going to do that. You can find off-brand QLEDs for about 500 bucks. So for the average console user, taking advantage of the features of this product will require $1,200 bare minimum. At that price point, you are well into gaming PC territory. I did a quick search on Newegg for gaming laptops. All the convenience of a console and more than capable models can be had for $1,200 to $1,500 plus you don't need to pay extra for online multiplayer. The other issue is that Sony is not following the smartphone model by making the previous version cheaper. Four years later, that original PS5 is still $500 US dollars, and this new model is not signaling the price drop that you would expect for that old model like a phone. And the announcement for this new expensive hardware showed you how you could experience old games better. There, there are no new must-have games coming out that will take advantage of this new power, so Sony had to show off years-old games that you can I don't know, I guess play again, but this time a little better looking. And I do mean a little better looking. This is from their own presentation. Here is the incredible graphical upgrade. Definitely seems like it's worth 700 bucks, right? They're the same picture. So Sony made a product for customers who are serious about high end graphics and high frame rates, but are casual enough to want to use a console, which does carry less hassle than PC gaming and have $2,000 or more for a console and a TV. Where, where are these people? That's an odd blend of customer, right? And Sony's own numbers revealed this. Earlier this year, we learned half of PlayStation players are still using the old generation PS4, which hit markets a decade ago. I guess they don't care about graphics or load speeds. I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you something. <laughs> we don't care. The launch video also revealed that 75% of PS players favor frame rates over graphical quality, and I'm among them. I don't notice the lack of like water reflections, but now that I've been to the 60 frames per second mountaintop, I can't tolerate the choppiness of 30 frames anymore. And Sony is kind of signaling that this is obviously the future of console gaming and its prices, so they are pushing their own customers to look into PC gaming. They are encouraging their own competition, and also they can maybe capture this tiny market of rich console gamers who demand top-notch visual performance. Par for the course, though, because they also just spent $400 million and eight years of development on this game that was so poorly received that they issued full refunds and announced its cancellation just 10 days after it launched. Look, I enjoy PlayStation. I have for some time, obviously, but what is happening over there? But since we've talked about movies and video games, how about we end with a video game movie? Borderlands. Oh, Borderlands. Look how they mess with my boy. Borderlands is the concord of the movie industry. That's the game that I was showing a few seconds ago. A product that is aping what everyone else is doing with almost nothing to distinguish it, years too late, and carrying a massive price tag. That is Borderlands. They spent 110, 120 million plus marketing. Let's just call the whole package 200 million for ease. It grossed 32 million worldwide. And they only keep half of that, by the way. The theaters get the other half. So they made $16 million on a $200 million investment. How could they have known it was going to flop, though? Well, let's see. It bears zero resemblance to the game that it shares a name with. The most glaring example is Roland, a seven-foot-tall super soldier who is super stoic. 
Some of the comedy in the game is based on how socially unaware and awkward he is, because life is always war, and war is hell, and he's super serious about it. Naturally, they cast Kevin Hart for that role. The tone was completely off. I, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about these games with one interaction. In the second game, you will meet a man who wants to be shot in his face. He is shouting about how much he wants it. His name is Face McShooty, and you are given a quest to shoot Face McShooty in the face. That quest is called Shoot This Guy in the Face, and you do, and his head is, it's gruesome. And you get a reward! That's the game. The list goes on. This was never going to attract anyone who played this game for more than seven minutes. So there's that audience gone and the good word of mouth they might have brought. For normal audiences, well, the trailer definitely scared them away too. Kate Blanchett, Jamie Lee Curtis looked bored and confused even in the trailer. Jack Black sounds annoying and uh, the, the girl playing Tiny Tina is clearly playing someone who is acting like what they imagined the word psychotic sounds like. I did watch it. I, I rented it because it's already for rent and uh, like I know we say things seem like they're written by AI now. It's a pretty common complaint. But this time it's really true. This is the definition of content. They had so many tropey lines that you've heard in other movies. You and what army? The one right behind me. I'm a bounty hunter, not a babysitter. I'm getting too old for this. Uh, guys, you're not gonna believe this. Those are all actual quotes from this movie. They did a found family thing. They did a noble sacrifice thing. They did peepee -pee humor comedy. It is seriously the most generic movie of all movies because it's an amalgam of every movie. They also rated it PG-13, so the planet full of, you know, bloodthirsty, murdering psychos had no blood and only implied murder. Just imagine the tone and humor and content of a Deadpool, but make it PG-13. And instead of Ryan Reynolds, they cast Stephen Wright. That's the Borderlands movie. This had no audience, and that is exactly who went to see it. As I've said before, I am excited to see this crap fail. Whether it's an established franchise that takes the original fans for granted and thinks yeah, they'll stick around no matter what crazy direction we take the franchise in, or a company that thinks you'll buy anything as long as the package says new and improved on it, or a soulless product that is the result of cash-grabby trend chasing. When they crash and burn, I'm right there with graham crackers, marshmallows, and chocolate. The entertainment industry will provide us quality entertainment or they'll die not trying. What are some recent garbage fires that didn't know their audience and warmed your heart with the flames of their failures? Let me know in the comments. I appreciate you spending your time with me, and I'll see you next time.